Gen Xers, my fellow millennials, we grew up on a steady dose of Muppets and Sesame Street. And after all these years, they are still going strong. And we're getting to tell our own kids how to get to Sesame Street. Disney's new musical comedy series, The Muppets Mayhem, brings back the beloved 1970s Muppet rock band. The series follows the journey of the electric mayhem as they work toward recording their first studio album with help from a young music executive played by former late night host Lily Singh. guys go hard. I was in college the first time I saw the Mayhem play. I grew up idolizing Dr. T. I bought gold grills just to be like him. Say cuckoo -cu -cu hey, hey! Well, we got a little sidetracked by the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. A two, three, four! I'm Nora Singh from Waxtown Records. I would love to help you make an album. Well, all right. Nora? What's happening? I think Animal digs you. I dig the animal as well. There are new characters joining the OGs, such as Gerald Teeth, father of the band's lead singer. Emmy award-winning puppeteer David Bizarro, a first-generation Latinx actor, is the man behind the puppet, and he joins us now. Okay, how does one become a puppeteer? <laughs> uh, well, for myself, it all started with uh, lying about my abilities to be a puppeteer okay. to a potential client, but uh, lots of studying. And so you work on your puppetry manipulation skills, which is not too dissimilar to dance. You work on your voice acting skills, but most importantly, you work on your acting and character acting skills. Because you have to have great coordination. You do, yeah. You have to have really good hand-eye coordination to control those puppets. But also, if you don't really work on your acting, it's not going to come through the character. That's why like all the characters on The Muppets are so relatable and, uh, and, and you understand them immediately because the acting is coming through the performers. Hand -eye coordination, I can now cross puppeteer off my list of things that I can do with my life. I have to imagine that if you are a puppeteer and you get a call asking if you want to audition and then be a part of being a Muppet performer, like that, I mean, that's... That's top shelf. Yeah, absolutely. It's the sort of thing that you don't think is ever going to happen to you. Mm. You know, when you're a puppeteer, you're doing it because you love the craft. And when the Muppets call, you're just sort of like, wait, is this actually happening? Did I drink a little too much coffee this morning? What's going on? <laughs> but no, yeah, they, they are now starting to reach out and uh, work with a lot more younger puppeteers. And it's really incredible to be brought in. It's a dream come true. I have this complicated relationship with first, where on one hand, I love to celebrate when there is a first, a first yeah. Latinx performer performing with the Muppets. And at the same time, there's this feeling of it, nothing should take this long. Yes, no, absolutely. Nothing should take this long. But when I wish I had a better answer for all of it because in TV and production it's also complicated, but I agree, it shouldn't take this long. For me personally, it took me so long to find puppetry because I didn't start until I was in my 30s. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I started really late in life, but when you are first generation American, you don't know that puppetry is an opportunity for you. And part of that is because you don't see yourself represented in the craft, but also, you know, when your mom has just come to this country fleeing a civil war, you are focused on, I need a trade craft so that I can take care of my family and take care of myself and take care of my mom. And when you see puppetry, you think, oh, that's not something that's going to pay the bills. I'm not going to be able to take care of myself and everyone like I want to. But when I got older, I discovered, oh, actually, you can make money doing just about anything if you work hard at it and really uh, become the best you can at it. And that's what I strive to do as a puppeteer. When you talk about your mom uh, fleeing civil war, she is, of course, from El Salvador. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think about it in the context of this entire show where we open by talking about Title 42. We're talking about migrants and asylum seekers coming to this country. What part of your own story, what part of your own experience in this country do you feel you have been able to bring to your work? Oh my goodness, there's a lot, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, um, through, I'm, I'm just being flooded by a lot of different memories. Uh, growing up, I didn't fit in really anywhere. Mm -hmm. And when I'm performing, it's, the, the response that I get from other young people that come from a similar background, that's really what I, I try to work towards and represent. Because 
I didn't know, but like on Instagram, they will send me messages saying like, oh my God, this is incredible. I've never seen someone like me doing what you're doing. This is so cool. And that keeps moving me forward. And so even though I may not be, you know, like Gerald is, I, I don't know what ethnicity he is specifically, but I don't bring a lot of, uh, consciously a lot of like Latino or Salvadoran culturally specific things to the performance. But when someone sees me perform and they know that it's me, they're like, oh, that's something that I could do. That is obtainable. And that's something that I didn't have in my childhood. I've got about 20 seconds left before they yank me off the that's set. Okay. Being a dad. It's absolutely incredible. I tell my friends that it is simultaneously the most terrifying worst thing and the best thing of my entire life. I would not trade it for anything else. I love that answer so much. David Bizarro, thank you so much for being with us. You can watch The Muppets Mayhem right now on Disney+. Plus.